Last week in Ron Sailing, we finished our open water course in Bonaire and became certified scuba divers. We explored limestone caves and even went free diving in one of them. The tropical storm Brett paid us a visit, but luckily it had almost lost all its force when coming over Bonaire. The Germans we had hitchhiked with earlier invited us to come on a road trip through the national park. <laughs> the Washington Slagby National Park covers a big area of the northern part of Bonaire. Unfortunately, it was closed due to the rain that had come the day before. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you have. This is the only thing I have on the test drive, so you don't get the, the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> <It's weird. laughs> this whale was found wrapped around the bulb on a ship that arrived in Bonaire in 2001. Dr. J. Haviser led a group of teenagers to reconstruct the skeleton, which can be seen outside the museum. Since plan A didn't work, we went for plan B. Let's go around the island the other way. Heading south along the west coast, we passed an obelisk and a compound of slave huts where the slaves lived while working in the salt ponds. The food truck was not there. <laughs> the food truck was, raining. was not there either. So now we're here looking at the beach and we're gonna go to the to the bay, right? Yes, the Luck Bay. The Luck Bay. And this is our new German friends who we met while we were hitchhiking. <laughs> and they were nice to stop and give us a ride. Yes. Yeah you were. We were not Thank murderers. You. No. <laughs> You're still alive. You guys yeah. alive, I'm alive. It's The slave huts are a reminder of Bonaire's repressive beginning. The huts were used as sleeping quarters for the slaves that worked in the salt ponds, collecting and loading salt onto the ships. Yeah, so this is one of the huts where they, uh, the slave uh, slept. And as you can see, it's so tiny. And uh, I don't know if it's true, but they say that in one of these huts, it was five to six men sleeping at night, so I mean, miserable yeah. conditions, really. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know the reason, I mean, it can't be to, to make it so small, but, but uh, 
know, really harsh conditions for the workers, you know, the slaves. The obelisk in the background was used as a navigational shore marker to guide ships where to drop anchor and where to pick up their cargo. There's a lot of flamingos on the island, but they're not always easy to spot. But we were lucky. Driving along the coast on the windward side, we could see the effect of the mild tropical storm that passed by a couple of days earlier. Jibe City is a windsurfing mecca and is located in Lac Bay on the east coast. Like the name says, it's like a small city where kids and adults who love windsurfing spend all their time. Here's a geocache place, and now we're going to the bush and hope we find someone. Uh, some and you have already found some on this island, yes, right? Yes, six. Six geocaches. Yes. And what is, In caves, what is that? That is, uh, oh my god. It's a box. Well, here was a box with funny stuff inside you can trade. Mm -hmm. And you can log in and log on the internet and say, yeah, okay, I find it. I found it. Found? Find? Yeah. I don't know. Yes. I found it. Found cool. it. I found it. Woo! So let's go and see if we found this one. There's supposed to be something, 55 meters, now it's, yeah, this direction. <laughs> Woo! Oh. What's the old battery? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Treasures! Wow! wow. Oh. <laughs> Maybe snakes inside. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Passports. No. <laughs> <laughs> Dollars, passports, yeah. and one gun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so take more inside. More inside? Or yeah, no, there's more. Okay, it's a lock. So, what else? Wow. Oh, it's been there for a long time. Yeah, wow. yeah. 2002. Yes. And uh, some travel bucks. <laughs> Some, some travel bucks. Uh, some people have bucks, have small, so nice. <laughs> have small things who want to travel around the world. There's a number and you can take with you and bring it to your hometown or to other place. Nothing a lot in of here. plastic stuff. Toys. There's a pen inside? No. We need our own. Uh, oh, what's that? Awesome. Oh my god. It's <laughs> <laughs> and you pick it up and then you take the band the into gun. the machine gun and it takes the patterns from this box. It's pretty old, it's like uh, Second know. World War? Yeah, it could be. Okay. What are we gonna leave? I left some uh, Euro coin. A uh, Euro coin, 20 oh. cents. That's Euro. all I had. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Write Toy. our first <laughs> cash. Or what's, what's it called? Malmö, Sweden. Malmö, you can, you can take another book. Oh, yeah. So you have to hide a little. Yeah. <laughs> <It's a secret>. <laughs> <laughs> and no donkeys. <laughs> no donkeys. Yes. Awesome. It's okay? Yeah, it's okay. Yay. Only a couple of hundred meters away, the map showed another geocache. Five meters. Here. Four meters. Okay, now we, we don't find we can check some information. Here it is. You found it? Yeah! Oh, oh yes! <laughs> yes! Yes! Ta da! Oh, okay. oh yeah! Oh, wow! Yeah, but not so crazy. Some uh, leaves. <laughs> now we can ride, it's need uh, help. Uh, all that. <laughs> We'd never been geocaching before, but Marius and Inga were real pros. It was a lot of fun and felt like treasure hunting. Yeah. And who doesn't want to find a treasure? It's a normal one. That's a truddy. That means he has only trade. Sometimes you cannot trade. Sometimes. On the last stop on our road trip, we were back on the west coast and decided to go snorkeling at Thousand Steps. We had such a great day. 
And something we really love about traveling is that you meet people and start hanging out straight away. We love that spontaneity. Walking down the thousand steps. There's no thousand steps. It's uh, seven o'clock and we're doing the checkout. We're going to leave Bonaire today, so to um, Curaçao. And uh, it's a 35 nautical mile downwind sail, so it should be pretty easy. Immigration hadn't arrived yet, so we had to wait for 10 minutes, then 20 minutes, and then we went on a walk, and 40 minutes later, we could finish the checkout. As we were about to sail downwind, we set up the whisker pole for the Genoa. Three lines keeps the pole in place, and the pole keeps the sail stable and project it better to the wind. This setup also enables us to reef the headsail easily. upload it on Instagram and Facebook because we, we realized that we had Wi-Fi still Not wi for a connection but it's it's like almost halfway uploaded so I don't know I don't know if this helps and uh, we're only using the head sail today because the wind is enough as it is we're doing six knots without the main and uh, we wanted to use these today <laughs> because uh, as you might know we don't have a bimini so when the sun is up it's really hot to sit here in the main cockpit it's really nice to sit here now in the shade this up just going downwind sit here and read because it's a lot more comfortable here than in the other, the other cockpit. So what else? Um, yeah, beautiful day. Nothing special has really happened. I guess we have around 15, 16 nautical miles to go to Curaçao, to Spanish waters where we will uh, anchor for tonight. Oh yeah, for a couple of days. And we will do the check-in in, in uh, Willemstad tomorrow morning. I guess we'll take the bus up there.
about the big cockpit. Oh, it's so nice to be to sit here. It's much more comfortable. It's more relaxing. So yeah, we have to figure something out so we can have shade here uh, when we're sailing. It's very nice. Very good sailing today. Not too big waves. Not too rolly, even if we only sail with the head sail. Bonaire has been one of our favorite places so far, and it was a bit sad to leave. But that's how it is when sailing. Sometimes you have to move on, and we had plans made in Curaçao. We're sailing pretty close to the reef here on the south coast of Curaçao. You can see the waves are breaking over here. I don't know how far it is over there, but maybe 300 meters or so. But I guess where we are, probably 200 meters deep, or maybe not, but uh, at least 100. So it gets yeah, shallower pretty faster. And in a while we're going to change course, go a bit more to the north, up to um, Spanish waters. Uh, I guess we have about seven nautical miles, something like that to go. So we'll be there in an hour and a bit. When getting closer to the entrance, we saw a sailboat coming towards us in full speed. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting an escort into the Spanish water. <laughs> Dad, how are you guys doing? How was the passage? Very good, very smooth sailing. We had like 20 knots downwind, not so big waves. So, yeah, it was perfect. That's nice, that's nice. Are you going to Echo or are you going to Avalina? We are going to anchor in Spanish water. Okay, follow me. Okay, we'll do so. <laughs> mm -hmm. We'll bring you to a good spot, best spot. No wings, no show there, not much. Perfect. Yes. Great. Okay, see you later. Okay. Now we are uh, going by motor here in this uh, narrow inlet. It was pretty narrow. I wouldn't like to come here during night. And I don't know what this is, some kind of uh, resort. Pretty cool with the, with the dock. There's like a beach on the other side and you can moor to the dock. Vi kör ganska nära katamaranen. <laughs> Alcino rafted up alongside Ron and we could say hello and like that we had made our first friend in Curaçao. It's okay. Hello. Welcome to Curaçao. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, man. Hi. How are you guys doing? I'm Alcino.
And of course, Barry, the old sea dog, was there. Thank you guys for watching this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe to see all our videos. And oh yeah, please hit the thumbs up. That will make us very happy. See you in the next one. Ciao.